Uh, welcome learners, we shall be tackling this topic called the Sermon on the Mountain. It's a class 7 topic in unit 2 and it's also a way of revision for the candidates. So before we begin, we'd like to know why we call it the Sermon and why on the mountain and uh, who brought this Sermon and why did he bring it on the mountain. But before then, let us look at a person called Jesus, and we'll look at Jesus at uh, different ages. we look at Jesus at the age of eight days. Forty days. Twelve years. Thirty years, and about... 33 years. Why do you want to look at this? Uh, because this sermon was delivered by Jesus. And when he was teaching the sermon, or when he was given the sermon, he was at a certain age. At the age of eight days, which is uh, recorded in Luke chapter 2, uh, Jesus was given a name and he was also circumcised. At the age of 40 days, Jesus was dedicated or presented in the temple. At the age of 12 years, he attended the Passover ceremony in Jerusalem. About 30 years, and this is where our interest is, he was baptized in River Jordan and he began his ministry. And when Jesus began his ministry, he taught people in three main ways. And these ways, number one, was miracles. The first miracle at Cana of Galilee. Number two, number one was miracles. Number two, he used sermons. And number three, he used parables. At the age of 30 years. And uh, he only worked, or he only delivered his uh, work within three years, and then he left and died. So these are the main ways that Jesus used to uh, deliver his message or to reconcile people with God. Number one, learners, miracles. Number two, sermons. And number three, parables. Our interest is on the sermon. And we'd like to define this term, sermon. A sermon is a talk on a religious or moral subject. Especially one given during the uh, church services, uh, and has its uh, basis on the passage from the Bible. So this sermon can be given in that church when you have your service. We have other meanings of sermons, but here we shall be dealing with the one that is based from the Bible. Why the sermon on the mountain? Because when Jesus was teaching, he was seated on a hill. And this hill gave us the title, mountain. So this is a talk on a religious or moral subject, especially the one given during church service, which has its base on the passage from the Bible. And number one, that, uh, on the teachings of Jesus, number one, he talked about values. So you want to look at the values that Jesus taught from this Sermon on the Mount. The values. Uh, learners, what is the meaning of this term value? 
good. A value is a form of conduct. And this form of conduct will make people like us or dislike us. So a value is a form of conduct. Or we can just say a value is a quality of life that we choose to follow. You can choose the right quality. You can choose the wrong quality. But for Christians, we talk about these good values. We can further divide our values into two. We have those good values that will make people like us. We also have other bad values that will make people dislike or hate us. So these good values or good forms of conduct that will make people like us are called, yes, they are called virtues. These are good forms of conduct. And this good form of conduct will make people uh, like us or even be happy when uh, they learn about them. Examples, we can talk of honesty, we can talk of integrity, we can talk of uh, justice and many more. I hope learners from home, you can add the uh, more virtues in your notebook. The next one, these are now the bad one. Remember we talked of good forms of conduct. We also have the bad forms of conduct that we shall call vices. Who can give us examples of vices? Examples of uh -huh, lying, Cheating, good, dishonesty, arrogance, another one, anger, pride, very good, greed, all these are called vices because they are bad or they are bad forms of conduct. So when we talk about values, Remember we said they are forms of conduct that will make people like or dislike us. And we have divided them into two, virtues and vices. So we have good ones that are called vice, uh, virtues and we have the bad one called vices. So for Christians, we can go ahead and talk about the two major or main values here. Number one, Alanas, Christian values. Number two, secular values. Just from the terms Christian and secular. I know you can define who a Christian is, and most of us like uh, listening to secular music. So you can also define what secular values are. To begin with, let us look at the Christian values that we are taught during the Sermon on the Mount. Christian values taught during the Sermon on the <coughs> Mount. Uh, these values were taught by Jesus Christ. And he was seated on a hill, and that is why we called it the Sermon on the Mountain. So these are qualities of our life that Christians find worthwhile. 
or these are qualities of life uh, that uh, we choose to follow. And they bring joy, they bring eternity, and we are happy when following them. So Christian values were taught by Jesus, and they are based on the Bible teaching. So when you hear of the word Christian, remember, it is because of Jesus Christ. So these values we are taught by uh, Jesus, and they are based on Bible or biblical teaching. Secular values, these are values that the world finds worthwhile. Well, they are good to have. It is good to have these secular values. But remember, we should have, uh, the first priority should be Christian values because they lead to eternity. Well, this one will only help us. The secular values will only help us live a comfortable life on earth, which is just uh, for a short period of time. So Christian values, they are taught by Jesus, and they are based on biblical teaching. Secular values, they deal with worldly desires. Let us look at examples of Christian values. These are derived from um, Matthew chapter 5. Let us open Matthew chapter 5, learners. Matthew chapter 5, from verse 1 to verse 11. Matthew chapter 5 it's just a part of the sermon. The sermons will run all the way, they will run all the way from Matthew chapter 5 to Matthew chapter 7. Where we talk about judging others. So, in Matthew chapter 5, we only have a part of the sermon on the mount. And these are the things we call true riches, or we call them the Beatitudes. They start with happy or blessed etc. So Christian values according to Matthew 5, 1 to 11, Alanas, I want us to recite them. I want to give you a table here. I want to give you a table. I hope you'll be developing that table with me. So make a table. And your table should have two. We have columns and rows. Here we shall have a beatitude. On the other side, we have a reward. And I will number them. Number one, two. Nine. So I'm going to give you a beatitude, and then you either uh, complete it or I complete it for you. Then you write the beatitude. So here we have the game. You either write the beatitude or the uh, reward. The first one. Happy are those who are spiritually poor. Uh -huh. Happy are those who are spiritually poor. Uh -huh. I can hear someone saying they shall be rewarded. That is okay, but not the correct answer. <laughs> Happy are those who are spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Good. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Number two, I will give you a reward, and then you give me the beatitude. They will be comforted. God will comfort them. Aha, uh -huh, learners. Who will be comforted? Very good. Happy are those who mourn. Happy are those who mourn. God 
will comfort them. The rest, I'll mention them, then you complete. Happy are the humble. A good, they will receive what God has promised. When we talk about humility, learners, humility, that is in Matthew 5, verse 3. Remember from your good news Bible, they will use the word, or they have used the word, humble. But when you go to other versions of the Bible, <coughs> like the Revised Standard Version, the Holy Bible, they will talk of the meek. If not the meek, you be told, or they will talk of gentle. If not the gentle, they will talk of the mild tempered. Mild tempered. So, happy are the mild tempered, happy are the gentle, happy are the meek. The are what is? It is different from the humble. This one, they will inherit the earth. Very good. So, note that. Note better. When we talk about the humble, happy are the humble, they will receive what God has promised. But happy are the meek, happy are the gentle, happy are the mild-tempered, they will inherit the earth. Next one. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. Good. God will satisfy them fully. Happy are the merciful. Happy are the merciful. God will be merciful to them. And the simplest one, happy are the pure in heart. Happy are the pure in heart. They will see God. The next one, happy are the peacemaker. Happy are the peacemakers. They will be called children of God. Happy are those who are persecuted because they do what God requires. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Finally, happy are those who are persecuted for Christ's sake. A great <coughs> reward is kept for them in heaven. This one are just a part of the sermon on the mountain. So the sermon on the mountain is quite a long one. It starts all the way from Matthew 5 to Matthew chapter 7. Learners, I hope you have noted that and uh, you will not forget it. I want us to look at each value now derived from the Sermon on the Mount and that value should be a Christian value. Do you remember the first uh, beatitude? Yes, you do. Happy are those who are spiritually poor. So the first one is poverty. The next one was <coughs> happy are those who mourn. God will comfort them. So we can have this, uh, we can derive so many values from this sermon. So let me list them and then we look at them. Mercy, write them. Humility. Purity. Another one. Peace. And peace will go together with contentment. The next one. Discernment. The other one. Judgment. Together with. Forgiveness. 
and reconciliation. I want to add some more. Number nine, number eight, we can talk of prayer and fasting. And finally, we can also talk about integrity. We can even add another one and call them true riches. So learners, let us uh, read together. One to go, the first one. Poverty, good. The other one. Mercy, the other one. Humility, the other one. Purity. Peace and contentment. Number six. Good. Number seven. Judgment, forgiveness, and reconciliation. Good. Number eight. Prayer and fasting. Number nine. Integrity. And number ten, you have written true uh, riches. So all these are Christian values from the Sermon on the Mount. Can you now start thinking of these uh, uh, values? Poverty, mercy, what do we really mean? When we talk about poverty, what do we really mean? I want us to open our Bibles. Uh, Open Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. I hope you're there. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 says, Very good. Happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Another person, Matthew 5, verse 3. Another version. Says, happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. That is according to the Good News Bible. So when we talk about poverty here, we are not talking about money. We are not referring to monetary value. We are talking about spiritual, spirit. These are the people who hunger for the word of God. eh? They look for God everywhere (coughs) until he is found. So when we talk about poverty here, uh, don't think that we are talking about money. We are talking about those who are spiritually poor. And the spiritually poor, we've said, these are people who are seeking and trusting in God. Then we have the merciful. The merciful. To be merciful is to have pity on someone and doing something good without expecting returns. And that is also in Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, the act of forgiving those who wrong us In our our Lord's prayer, we say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive. So the moment you're forgiving, then you have mercy on the offender. Humility. Humble yourself before the Lord. He will lift you up. Humble yourself before the Lord. Humility. Is the act of showing off or the act of not showing off and all but lowering and lifting others. So if you are a humble person, you are not there to show off. You lower yourself and you lift others. So that is humility. And uh, you remember a certain parable? 
the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. Talks about humility in prayer. Don't go beating your chest. You know what? I'm the strongest. Eh? I'm the biggest. Eh? You can't tell me anything. Uh, humility means you lower yourself and you lift others. Purity. Don't say that pur purity is a person. Purity means pure thoughts. What is running in your mind now? When the teacher is teaching, what are you doing? What are you doing with your phone? Yes. What are you googling? What are you checking? So, purity talks about your mind. Act of good thoughts, intentions, and even activities. And when we talk about pu pu purity, here we will emphasize how it is demonstrated. One, it is practicing chastity. Get to your dictionary. To your dictionary. Chastity. And write the meaning of chastity. <coughs> and number two, it is being truthful. Being truthful, we can uh, use the word honesty. And honesty is not only telling the truth, but willing to tell the truth. So honesty is not telling the truth, but willing to tell the truth. Can you tell the truth even without being asked? Alanas, uh, the teacher... Uh, finds you making noise, eh? A whole class of 35 or 40 pupils. <laughs> and then uh, all of a sudden, you freeze. And you pretend that no one was talking in that class. And the prefect is like, who was making noise? Eh, you start looking at each other, eh? And no one is willing to tell the truth. You should even volunteer. You're not supposed to wait to tell the truth. When at home, your parents are working, and uh, in the evening they are there. They want to be told everything that happened during the day. Are you willing to tell the truth? Peace and contentment. At least no peace, it's a state of calm and harmony without conflict. Contentment is being satisfied with what you have. If the only thing you have is a small phone, God, eh, that one, you said it. If it is that small phone, are you contented with it? Or you are comparing yourself with your uh, neighbor, eh, your friend, or you look at your shoes, yeah, this, this shoe of mine is not the best. I need the one that is high. Contentment means being satisfied, one, with who you are, Two, with what you have. And three, with where you are. So if you are comfortable, contented, satisfied with who you are, where you are, what you have, then we can say that you have peace and contentment. Peace is important for your mind. Discernment. Learners, I have a question here. Assume you are the head boy or the head girl of your school. And two boys are brought to you because they were found doing something. Or maybe you can say they were smoking behind the school latrines. What would you do? What would you do? Uh -huh. I can hear someone saying, one, I would kill them thoroughly. I will forward them to the teacher. The first thing is to analyze the situation. Criticize. Get to the bottom of the matter. Discernment means analyzing a given situation. To analyze is to know who did what. Who brought this cigarette? Who said, let us go behind the latrines ETC? So discernment is that act of one, analyzing the situation before reaching a judgment or before 
making your judgment. And a judgment here, judgment, it's a decision that we arrive at after analyzing a situation. A judgment, it is the decision we arrive at after analyzing a certain situation. After judging, are you willing to forgive? Are you willing to reconcile mending broken relationship? In African traditional society, I hope you remember you are told, people reconcile by shaking hands, eating together, uh, drinking beer together, dancing together. Finally, forgiveness was sought, judgment was there, discernment was there. Prayer and fasting, though we shall come to that in detail, but uh, a prayer is a communication that we have with God. If you want to call your parent, you just pick your phone, Naboneza, 07 ETC, and then you call. Then you start talking, Dad, Mom, mm -hmm. bring me ETC. Uh -huh. You are communicating. It is the same way while praying. So when you are praying, you are communicating with God. And God will also answer. He will answer in three ways. He will either say, yes, or no, or good. Yes. If that prayer is well intended, no. If that prayer is ill intended, wait if it is not the right time. When you get to class eight uh, questions, you'll be told of a certain child who wanted to get married immediately after KCP, and he's praying, God, uh, this is what I want. And you're told, what kind of a response do you think God will give? Is it a no? Is it a wait? Of course, yes, it's not there. It is not the right time. God can say, no, it is not the right time. Wait, wait for the right time. So God will always respond in these three ways. Yes, no, or wait. Fasting. Learners, what is fasting? It is denying yourself food and sometimes drinks in order to pray for a certain is you. You deny yourself. No, it is different from hunger strike. Hunger strike means there is no food. But fasting means you deny yourself. You can also deny yourself the luxury that you would have enjoyed in order to pray for a certain issue. Now the question is, can you fast without praying? Someone say no. Allah said yes. Okay, can you pray without fasting? Yes, you can pray without fasting, but you can't fast without praying. So these two will always go together. So these are some of the values that are learned from the Christian values from the Sermon on the Mount. Then we have integrity. Integrity is the quality. Integrity is a way. Let's talk about a quality of being depended upon or relied on. Can you be left home alone? And you take care of everything, including the livestock, your brothers and sisters, making sure that they are satisfied without crying, or you even lock the doors with bed, etc., everything there. Integrity is that quality, a quality of being relied upon or depended on. And finally, we talk of the true riches. These are the true riches that uh, uh, we read in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, from verse 3, from verse 1 to verse 11. Learners, I hope uh, that one is uh, understood. And uh, if you have any question, Keep that question coming. Just uh, you have the number down there. 
kindly uh, uh, write your question there the teacher will answer it i want us to discuss uh, to discuss prayer in details we want to understand what a prayer is the elements of a good prayer and why sometimes our prayers are not answered So let us uh, look at uh, prayer. That was our B now, because we have talked about Christian values from the Sermon on the Mount. So a prayer, a right, it is a communication that we have with God. And this communication is direct. So there is no intermediaries. There are no uh, people to connect you. So you don't have to pray through someone. You pray direct to God. And when praying, we've said it's a communication. So write that. It's a communication that we have with a God. Every prayer has elements. element of a good prayer. If you want to uh, get this, just write this word. Let us read together. Let us read together. Very good. Act. Then ask yourself, what is this act? Why the act? Why the act? A stands for it stands for adoration. 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 C stands for confession. Confession. T stands for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And S stands for supplication. So these are the elements of a good prayer. What do I mean by elements? I mean every prayer must have all this. When you are praying, you can be praying as a group or as an individual. Your prayer must have acts. A for adoration, C for confession, T for thanksgiving, and S for supplication. This application is further divided into two. One, we have petition. This is own prayer. This means that you are praying for yourself. This way you mention your name. You tell God your needs. Two, we have inter intercession. Intercession, this is praying for others. So when praying, you are supposed to one, to pray for yourself, and number two, pray for others. But in most cases, we forget the petition part. We only remember the others, and you forget yourself. So when praying, make sure that you include all these uh, elements. Adoration means praising. From the Lord's Prayer, we start by saying, Our Lord who is at in heaven. 
for our Father who is at in. You are making God feel uplifted, great, and all that. That is why we call it adoration or just praise. Then you have to confess your sins. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Then you have to thank God. Supplication, you have to pray for yourself and also pray for others. Types of prayers. One. You can give us an idea. Yes, Lana? Uh -huh. We have a public prayer. And we have a private prayer. Public prayer is the one said aloud. In the hearing of many people. Private prayer is said silently. Actually, no one can tell what you are praying about. And it is, is it the best or the worst? Which is better between the public and the private? Private is better because you tell God your innermost thoughts. In, uh, the one that is inside. The one that you feel no one should know. You are innermost secret. But public, anyone can hear what you are saying. For example, when we have the Lord's uh, Prayer, is it a private one or a public one? It's a public one. When we pray in the parliament, that's a public one. But when you are praying alone, silently, when no one can hear whatever you are saying, that one is called a private prayer. So why pray? We pray when we want God to help us in some issues. We pray to strengthen others. We pray for our nation. We pray for our leaders. We pray when they, we are doing our exams. But prayer should be said anytime, anywhere, anyhow. So don't say that you have to kneel down and pray. No. You have to lie down. No. You can pray standing, jumping, seated. But make sure you don't pray in bed because finally you will sleep and forget to say amen. Actually, you find yourself saying amen in the morning. So finally, uh, because our time uh, is uh, almost up, we shall touch a little bit about fasting. And we say that fasting is denying yourself food and sometimes drinks in order to pray for a certain issue. The Bible talks of fasting being secretive. You don't have to make a big show of it. Actually, no one should know whether you have ever fasted. No one should even know whether you are fasting. No, it is a secret. It is between you and your God, and you should not make a big show of it. So when praying and when fasting, don't make a big show of it. Prayer and fasting, they renew our relationship with God. Prayer and fasting strengthens our faith. Prayer and fasting brings us uh, closer to God. And uh, prayer and fasting helps us to uh, live holy uh, lives. So anytime you are praying, anytime you are fasting, uh, remember to be humble. Humility is the key to a good prayer and uh, even a good uh, when fasting. So learners, I hope you remember all that. We talked about the Sermon on the Mount, and we say that a sermon is a talk on a Christian or religious or moral subject, especially the one given during church services. And uh, we have also mentioned uh, values. We talked about uh, Christian values, and we talked about secular values. So I would like to answer your questions. If you have any question, Alanas, if you have any question, kindly. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Let me have the questions. Uh, good, 
I can see uh, some learners here. No question, but they are really uh, learning. And someone is also asking what uh, chastity means. And chastity, I said, is having pure intentions. Purity in mind. Pure behavior. Avoiding immorality. Avoiding immorality. So, if you are immoral, then you lack chastity. Someone is also asking something different from uh, Matiadom. And uh, Matiadom is that act of suffering or even be ki being killed because of uh, your individual or one's faith. Uh, I hope I've answered all the questions, uh, learners. And I, I believe you have benefited. And uh, until next time, I have been your teacher, Peter Wanyeki, from Nyeri Good Shepherd, Nyeri County, Nyeri Central Sub-County. I wish you a nice day. <laughs>